Hello and welcome to another homebrew update. I'm Troy, your host, and if you've been having a rough week this week, well, we've got some great homebrew news for you, so let's go ahead and get started. Starting things off, the homebrew launcher on the Nintendo Switch has been updated to version 2. The GUI has been updated heavily and is also less laggy. One really cool thing about the GUI is it will actually change with what theme you are on. Now, I've only ever used the light theme for the Switch, so I don't know how it looks for a dark theme or, you know, for like any other themes out there. But it's still really cool that they did that. And they also add the little wavy blue things on the bottom of the uh, application as well so that you know it still sticks with the other homebrew launchers having the waves in there. Skipping the 3DS and onto the PlayStation Vita. On the PlayStation Vita we have a new homebrew called the Vita Media Center. I can't tell you how many times it took me just to say that for some odd reason. The Vita Media Center allows you to play videos straight from your PlayStation Vita. No longer do you need the QMCA to move files from your PC over onto the Vita. It does support MPEG-4 files as well as H.264 files and more files will be supported in the incoming future. Also in the future, it will support SMB, so you'll be able to play your videos wirelessly and not actually have to have them on the Vita themselves. And the last thing we're going to talk about, because this is going to be a very quick video, is the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 has seen a lot of stuff coming recently for this week, and we're going to start off in chronological order, starting with the popular developer QWERTY. QWERTY has released a 4.55 kernel exploit for the PlayStation 4. Now, you can't use this PlayStation 4 exploit until you have a user LAN exploit or a WebKit exploit. So, developer Alex ZZZ released his own WebKit exploit that was able to be used on 5.04 I think it was I probably have that wrong but the exploit can also be used on 4.55 so if you add the two together you have one fully fledged working exploit that exploit now works just like 4.05 so all the users on 4.55 can rejoice we still have one more thing to talk about on ps4 though the developer morpheus has also released an exploit for 4.55 called the holy grail exploit now this holy grail exploit literally he just took everything that was on 4.05 and copied it and updated it to 4.55. There are still bugs on it, but what did this give you? DNS blocker and update blocker and things like that, as well as the debug menu and backup loading. I do have one thing to say about backup loading though. You will not be able to use the USB external device support because Morpheus will not allow it. Morpheus only wants homebrew to be used, it's just kind of a factor that you are able to run backups on it, you know, with everything that we have now, but like I said, Morpheus doesn't want homebrew to be used since homebrew is so small, you do not need an external device to run any homebrew off of it. And just to keep Morpheus holy grail exploit safe, he even made it so it's only closed source so that people can't, you know, add the support for USB functionality into it. And with that, guys, that is all I have for this week's homebrew update. I really hope you enjoyed this very quick video. I know I did because it makes it easier to edit. Uh -huh. Also, if you are one of the people who now have access to a PlayStation 4 with homebrew, do leave me a comment in below saying that you do. I just want to see all the new homebrews out there on the PS4 scene. And guys, just like always, everything I talk about will be in the description below. You'll see all the links to articles and things like that. And last but not least, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe button, and as well as that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. I hope you have a great week, guys, and happy homebrew.